First of all, uh, I welcome everybody here to listen to this talk about how to be creative and marketing in this new environment, in this new world. As we all know, marketing is a very, very broad word, very big word. Creativity, I've been asked by many people, how do you become creative? How is it possible to be creative? Can you learn it in school? Cannot. Creativity comes from letting your mind wander. Dream the impossible. Dream things that uh, other people will not dream. Then implementation is the most important thing. Think, how can I make this, how can I make this dream real? How can I make this happen? You know, advertising today, when you have a product, advertising is so competitive. There are so many new products everywhere. I always say that people who spend money for advertising, most companies are really wasting money. The newspaper won't be happy with me. <laughs> but because when you turn pages or even are surfing through the internet, everybody, people's attention span is a few seconds. If you're looking in a magazine or whatever it is, and you turn or you surf very, very quickly, unless something catches your eye, something different. It has to be innovative. It has to be different. What I always do whenever I'm trying to promote a product or, or an area or whatever, I always think, how can my product, who's my customer? I never think of myself as the boss. Always put yourself in the customer's eyes. Be critical. Look at it. Would I buy this? Would I go to this restaurant? Would I go to this place? Would I do this? It's very, very, very important because in today's world, e-commerce has changed the way we live, especially for young people. I see everyone in this room is young, except the two of us. <laughs> but um, it's, a, it's a different world. It's a changing world. And there is a divide in the world at the moment between the older generation and the young generation. So one thing as a marketer, there's still an established market for the old generation. Still a big business, but it's a diminishing business. It's a dying business. Old people still read newspapers. Economic Times is very happy about that. Younger generation won't touch a newspaper, they read online. And so you have that gap. As the older, older generation dies off, newspapers will disappear as we, as we know it. And online, obviously, will be the way that people get the news. And so our whole life is changing because of this internet, because of the change in the world. When I did Lan Kwai Fong and two icons, Ocean Park, I always thought, how can we be different? How can we make a difference? How do you create an area? Lan Kwai Fong was just a street, a dumb street in, in Central that didn't mean anything to anyone. But when I look at things, I look through different eyes. I look at things not for what they are. I look at things for what they could be. So when you look at, most people look at things, they just see the normal thing. I look beyond that. And you have to train yourself to look beyond what other people see. Look at things with different eyes. And suddenly you start to see beautiful things. When I first went to Lan Kwai Fong, it looked like laps up to me. It was an old street, it was rubbish. But I looked beyond. I, thought, I saw the, uh, the creation that it could be. Just the, the streets were narrow, the area was small. It had the potential to really pack people in and really create, an, create a vibe, create something special. And, no, and, and by doing that, that was the start. Then I decided 
let's be different. Instead of just having a street, let's have events once every two months. Be different than other areas. That's how you create an area, by having events. And so we came up first with uh, um, Halloween. We were the first ones to bring Halloween to Hong Kong when no one knew what Halloween was. And it was really something very, very special. We decorated the streets. We made it very, very, you know, very different. So at the beginning, this was probably 30, 30 years ago, when no one in Hong Kong knew what Halloween was. I, as a young boy, grew up with Halloween in Canada. And so at that time, the Chinese, the first few years, came to see the Guaylos dressed up and make fools of themselves. And then every year, I started to see more and more Chinese coming at Halloween, dressing up with their friends and families. And, and suddenly, it became a Chinese holiday. And from Halloween, we then went into Christmas. We then, it went into uh, Chinese New Year. We went into um, summer love parties, springtime summer love parties. We brought carnival to Lan Kwai Fong, street carnivals such as we have in, in US and in Europe. And so I wanted to bring things that makes it unique, thinking out of the box. If you put your mind in the box, you'll fail. All the dreamers are the ones that, that make things different, look at things totally different. A perfect example was Steve Jobs, who originally, um, I've said this before, you know, originally in the mobile phones, Nokia, Ericsson, Motorola, even Blackberry were the kings. Suddenly, uh, Steve Jobs comes along and says, well, I could do better. I can give it a twist. I can make the phone sexy. I can make an apple with a bite in it, have good graphics, because graphics are very, very important. Make the phone, give it a few extra functions, something that my competitors don't do. Make it a better mousetrap. Suddenly, that became um, a success, as we all know the story of Apple. Samsung, on the other hand, as well, the, and the other companies didn't follow suit. And of course, we all know now most of them are closed and don't even exist. So in this world of change, you have to be innovative. You have to be constantly changing. Samsung also was an old company. No one would buy a Samsung. They used to be my, I was in the fashion business. They were my factory in the old days. But we were able to get, Samsung was able to upgrade because they copied Apple and also came up with new innovative things and made it cool as well. So suddenly, Samsung also became a brand, became a name. And so whatever product you're doing, you have to give it that twist, make it different. Ocean Park, one of my favorite subjects, was a park that I first went to when Mr. Tung called me and asked me if I could take over chairmanship of Ocean Park because the park was losing money and, and uh, the, the government didn't know what to do with it. People said close the park and sell off the land, it's beautiful land. As usual, government can make a lot of money. <laughs> and I thought to myself, I have never been to Ocean Park. I told, I said, Mr. Tung, you're crazy. <laughs> Why do you ask me to become the chairman? I don't know what, anything about the park. I've never been, my kids went there. I'm a businessman, I never went there. And he said, you know, he called me six times. The sixth time I figured I'll give him face. I said, okay, let me go to the park. <laughs> so I went to the park, and the park was falling apart. The paint was peeling, the, pave the, the pavement was broken. I spoke to the CEO at the time. I said, what's wrong, you know, why don't you paint? Why don't you fix it? Oh, we don't have money. I said, well, how do you expect customers to come back to the park if it looks like you're going out of business? The important thing is always look like you're in business. Look professional. Whatever product you have, make sure it's different. Make sure it looks good. And so I said, I said we need to find a way. They were worried because Disney was coming. And so they're going to die. But all you are in 
marketing in, in business and you have products and you have these big, big brands, Disney, the best name in theme parks, is coming to Hong Kong. Ocean Park will die. And the staff, everybody was walking around with long faces. They didn't know if they would have a job. Their uniforms was from 1950, was government, typical government uniform. <laughs> because no one wanted to put any creativity into it. And I thought to myself, this is crazy. This park looks like it's closing down. It's going out of business. How can you get customers to come back again? Doesn't make sense. So the first thing I did, I called Mr. Tung. I said, Mr. I said, CH, if I don't take the job, who will you give it to? He said, I don't have anyone else. He said, maybe Raphael Hoy. Raphael Hoy, unfortunately, is, is, is got other things at the moment. But uh, I said, if you give it to Raphael Hoy, okay, I'll take it. Another government person. <laughs> I, I said, you may as well close the park, <laughs> especially with Disney coming. And so what I did was, uh, the first thing I did, I, went, I put a strong management team together. I went around the world, and I thought world class. Always think your product must be the best. Even if Disney is coming, why can't we be? Why can't we do something different? Why can't we be good? Same as Disney better than Disney. But you need to find a niche. You need to find, Disney had more money than us. They're bigger than us. As I'm sure all you face, uh, other competitors are much bigger than the companies you represent. How can I be, exist along with them? You need to find a place for yourself. And so what we did was, I put a strong management team together, and the first thing I did was change the uniform of the staff to give them some face. So at least they felt much better. They looked better. If you look good, you feel better. And that was very, very important. And, and then, of course, we painted. I found money to paint. And we fixed the pavement. And then, of course, the food at that time was terrible. You couldn't eat it. And I, you know, at that time, it was Maxime's who was the caterer. And I used to argue with them. I said, why, I said, why don't we serve good food here? And they said, oh, well, look at the customer. They don't expect better, so we can give them cheap food. <laughs> but they didn't understand that Hong Kong people and mainlanders love to eat. And they, eat, they love good food. So no matter if your customer <laughs> is low end, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and so I said, you know, I think we need to change the, uh, the, the management. Even though go government does things by tender, I broke every rule. If you work, don't be afraid to break rules if you believe you're right. If you stick within the box, you'll die. That's why you have to be creative. Creative management, I call it. And, and so I, I changed it. We took the food in-house. Because coming from Lan Kwai Fong, I know a little bit about food. And so I figured we can upgrade the food and really make it. Just because it's a theme park, why not serve good food? Everything you do must be great. Everything. And I've said this a million times, people get tired. I said, in my world, there's only first class. If you aim for first class, you'll get to business class. If you aim for business class, you'll get to economy. If you aim for economy, you'll go broke. So you have to aim whatever product, whatever you're trying to market. Make sure that it's real. Make sure it's good. The other thing is, marketing is one thing. And you know you can get people to come once or try your product once, but you have to make sure that product is good, is great, because they'll try it once. You can't fool people. I learned that a long time ago. If you build up the expectation, you have to live up to their expectation. And that's something that's very, very important. So the product that you're trying to market, you make sure that you believe in it that you would buy this product. Otherwise, tell your customer or your company that you work for, I'm not going to do this. You'll be doing them a favor. I know it's difficult because you have a job and you have to go out and do it. But I say, upgrade. Make sure that upgrade the product that you're trying to sell. Otherwise, you'll be fooling people and they'll never believe you again. And so what we did with Ocean Park, I felt we have to really find a way that we don't have the same money that Disney has. 
And with all your products, you do the same. I made, uh, there was a board, I put a list. I put Disney on one side, Ocean Park on the other side. Look at what your competitor is, what they do. And so I put Disney on one side. What's Disney? Disney is an American import. Ocean Park is local. There's a difference. Local has parents grew up with Ocean Park, grandparents grew up with Ocean Park, children are growing up with Ocean Park. So immediately I saw a difference there. And then on the other side, Disney is about fantasy. And what they do, they're the best in the world. Ocean Park, it's about conservation, the education, it's about the ocean, it's about all conservation, all these important buzzwords that the young people today is very important. The environment is very important to young people. So it's something that's totally different. So I've started to already see a trend that, that there was a difference. And then I thought to myself, okay, and Disney is fantasy and what they do, they're the best at that in the world. But then I thought, if I go to a Disney park one day, I, I, love, I love the attraction, it's great. If we go tomorrow, we go back the next day, it's mechanical, it's the same attraction, I've seen it. So I'm not sure I'm going back tomorrow. Ocean Park, if I go to Ocean Park, I go to see the pandas. And one day the pandas are kissing. The next day I go back, the pandas are fighting. The third day is the pandas are hanging from a tree. So in Ocean Park, expect the unexpected. Every day is different. I already saw a difference. I was creating something that I could see a difference between the two parks. And so then I realized that with Ocean Park, there is a difference. And Disney is about a castle and it's about a mouse. Ocean Park, at the other hand, is live animals. And so I thought to myself, wow, and you know, the press always asks me, and I say this a lot, I joke with them, they say, what's the difference between Ocean Park and Disney? I say, Disney has the fake mouse, we have the real mouse. <laughs> but it's the truth, I realized we have the real mouse, we have the real animals. And so I saw that Disney is not my competition. SeaWorld or those kind of parks are my competition. So you create, you start to see for your product, who's my competitor? It's like the economic times, who's your competitor? And how can I create a niche for myself? How can I be different by being creative? And now I see they're not my competition. I can go out and advertise and do things that are totally different to the marketing that Disney has. And we created things, and then we came up with, with great things, especially to appeal to local audience, whereby we came, we had a brainstorm. We want people to, we called it, I came up with the moniker, let's call it the People's Park, because it's homegrown. It belongs to the people of Hong Kong. It's been here for so many years, and everybody grew up with it. So I gave it a name, the People's Park. And after that, we went one step further. We want everyone to be able to come to the park. So on your birthday, your ID card, if you bring your ID card on your birthday, come for free. So everyone has the opportunity to come to Ocean Park. So all these things that we did were able to make people really appreciate it. And then we went ahead and hired the top designers in the world, the top architects in the world, theme park designers. And we designed everything in different lands, and we spent 5.55 billion on the park, but it was, it was, became the top park in the world. Two years ago, we won the applause award, number one in the world, that's like the Oscars. And so, when you're doing advertising, and then we sat down with the advertising team. In the old days, before I got there, they had gray advertising, which was, the advertising agency for, for Ocean Park. But at the time, when Disney came, Ocean Park was too small for Gray. They went to Disney. So I said, okay, no problem. We can take it. We're Hong Kong people. It's okay. Never fear. Never back down. I went with a young creative team who didn't have a name but was creative. 
who is young, and I told them, the same as I told the designers when we were building Ocean Park, I told them, forget the budget, dream. I want the best park in the world, the best design in the world. Later on, once you design it, if we have to value engineer, if we have to cut back into a budget, we'll do it. But if you design according to a budget, you'll never be successful. Create the, make the impossible possible. And that's, what I, that's exactly the way I do every marketing campaign. Everything that we do has to be different. When we did Halloween at Ocean Park, the same thing. We didn't have the money, even before Halloween, before I get to that, we didn't have the money to, for the advertising that Disney had. And so I came up with the idea, how do you do marketing? How can you be creative? If you don't have money, you got to think out of the box. So my first press conference, I was with um, the staff, the marketing team, and they said, what are, you, what, are you gonna, what are we gonna do for the event? We had the jellyfish attraction, the new attraction. They said, what are you gonna do? They said, I said, well, it was my first press conference, and what are we gonna do? We said, well, we have four little girls dressed up as jellyfish. I thought to myself, since I'm chairman of Ocean Park, if I'm chairman of a bank, I'm gonna dress in a suit and tie and be very formal because that's expected in a bank. In a theme park, it's about creativity, it's about fun. I said, well, what if I dress up as a jellyfish? And they looked at me and they thought, you're kidding. And I said, why not? I was very busy, I left and I didn't even think. Two weeks later, the press conference, all the press was outside. I came to the park and all the press was outside and I went into, into the backstage and, and uh, I saw the four little girls dressed as jellyfish and they pulled out my costume and I dressed up in a jellyfish costume and I looked in the mirror and I looked ridiculous. <laughs> and I thought there's no way all the newspapers are outside, all the photographers are outside, I'm not going outside <laughs> dressed as a jellyfish. But you know, when in Rome, do as the Romans, it was too late, everybody was outside, so I went out. And of course the press went crazy. The photographs, everyone was photographing, everybody was laughing. And I realized at that time what a hit we had because the next day, the front page of every newspaper, not just in Hong Kong, Seattle, Washington, Bangkok, Th Bangkok Thailand, <laughs> Aust Melbourne, Australia, every newspaper front cover, the chairman of Ocean Park dressed as a jellyfish. <laughs> was big, big news. And I realized at that time that for, and the newspapers won't like me, won't love me for this. Newspapers are in competition, are in business, and they need good stories. Alan Zeman dressed in a suit and tie is not gonna make the newspaper. Alan Zeman dressed as a jellyfish makes the front page. And for free. I don't have to pay for advertising. <laughs> and so each time we had an event, because it was very important, you know, the newspaper, the media, are the ones that are the ones that can uh, tell the story to the public. You have to, for me, what's very important in a press conference, I need to educate the media so that they really understand what the product is all about so they can convey, they can tell the real story to the public. Because they're the bridge between what I'm trying to sell and the public. And so I realized at that time how important that was. And every time we had an event, Alan Zeman would dress up. I've been, as many of you know, I've been a female wearing high heels, and I don't understand how female, I think they're crazy females, because I almost broke my neck. I was dancing <laughs> as a Calypso dancer. I was um, a bride. That was every, everything you can imagine, but over the years. But those, that really helped to create an image in marketing for the park, and didn't cost any money, just the cost of the costume. By, by being clever, by being innovative, and you know the history, every year, year in, year out, we beat Disney in attendance. We became the top park in the world. And it was only because of these, the different thinking out of the box. Halloween, when we did Halloween, I realized it was something that was so important. Because the first time, Halloween was an American holiday. And so when we did the first Halloween, the first year, it was American haunted houses. And I watched, I always watched your customer. Look at who's your customer. What do they expect? The first time they came, yes, they were a little bit scared. It was 
fun and all that. The second year, I could see that they were getting, they weren't so, ha so, so excited about it. They weren't so scared. Then I realized Chinese kind of have a different culture than Americans. Chinese have their own ghosts. <laughs> they worry about, you know, most of them sleep with the light on at night, <laughs> you know, because that's the culture. That's the way you're brought up. And so I said to my staff at the time, why not make the haunted houses uh, revolve around Chinese ghosts, Chinese culture, Chinese haunted houses, uh, bad things that happened during the past years, you know, haunted houses, all these kind of things. And as soon as we did that, they looked at me and they said, really? I said, yeah, let's do it. And as soon as we did that, Halloween became the best in the world. The attendance we get every year, over a million visitors every year uh, during Halloween, it becomes a special thing. And then we went one step further. The ads that we created every year, we won awards for every kind of ad. I'm going to show you this year's ad, which I just filmed a little while ago. Some of you may have seen it on YouTube. But it's, it's again, innovative, out of the box, out of the box thinking. We'll just do a quick. Cho chow cha. That's this year's ad for, you know, but the difference is today, because of the internet, you need to be innovative. You need to be able to have the guts to do things different. If you want to attract people to your product, you have to think out of the box, not be afraid to experiment, to do things. What we did every year, we win incredible awards. And with today's world of advertising, because the media is, is not the only place to advertise, now you have YouTube, you have the internet. Everybody, everything goes, people live their lives with the phone, with, with the iPhone. That is the new way of life for all the young people. And people's social media has become such an important part of young people's lives. It's, it's, and everybody believes what they hear, what they see. So that's why it's so important. That's how you can launch your product, even not having to spend a lot of money. It's got to be something special. Something that's different goes on YouTube and goes viral, as you well know. Doesn't cost much. But it's really thinking, how can I be different? How can I make my product? How can I not be afraid to experiment? It's today's media world is, is so different than before. Uh, you know, people, not so many people watch television anymore. They watch, you know, they, they, do, they watch the internet. They watch all their programs on, on the internet. So you have to tap into social media. 
you have to be part of it. Make your product cool. And how do you do that? Graphic design, very, very, very important. Your brand, your name. The crazier the name, the better. As you say, Uber, what does that mean? <laughs> Nobody knows, but very successful today. Just thinking of things that, that really can work, having ideas that you think can, can happen. Uber happened because two guys were in France in front of the Eiffel Tower, two young guys from London were in front of the Eiffel Tower. And they were trying, the weather was raining, they couldn't get a taxi. And they thought to themselves, if I can, you know, uh, wouldn't it be great if we can just call a taxi and come and pick us up? They were there for hours. Paris is very difficult to get a taxi. And they thought, wouldn't it be good if we could call someone? And, and they had the idea. Um, yeah, and then they took it one step further. Yes, if we can call a taxi, if we can call someone, why not be someone in a black Mercedes? And then we can go to a club at night with a driver in a black Mercedes and have be picked up in the black Mercedes Benz. And all the girls will think we're so rich, we have a driver and we have... <laughs> and that was the idea. And so they first they experimented with 10 friends because they came to see me a few days ago, you know, to talk to me about their problems in Hong Kong. And, and I thought to myself, wow. Um, and so they tried it amongst 10 friends first and the thing really worked. And so then they was, went viral. And as we know today, it's one of the fastest growing companies around. So all you need in today's world is an idea, an idea that works. In today's marketing world, things, if you have uh, um, new, new businesses that make sense, if there's a need for something, you can put it on the internet. It works very, very, very quickly. And, and you're able to scale it, you're able to sell it, uh, and by being, being different. As I said again, and I can't repeat this enough times, look at what your competition is doing and be different. And then you have a chance to really make scale it, make it happen. And the internet is going to get more and more um, easy to use, new technology, everything, our whole life is going to change. And I, I say this, every company in the world, if they don't go towards IT, whether it's newspapers, whether it's banking, whether it's whatever product it is, if you're not in the new world, you will die. You have to adapt, you have to change the way you do business to adapt to the new world. And that is the future and hopefully Hong Kong will join and stop trying to have uh, an IT minister, which Lechko keeps blocking, which is crazy. <laughs> but it's important that uh, we really get moving with it. And, uh, and then lead once again, be, be the, the heads of, of industry, as Hong Kong always did, because China's moving very, very quickly. And all the competition around us is moving very, very quickly. But we have the one thing about Hong Kong, we have a lot of creative people Everyone in this room, I can see, just the interest is very, very interested and creative. Let your hair down if you have hair. Let your hair down. Don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to think crazy thoughts. And don't let your company keep you in a box. Go beyond the box. Be different. If you have a newspaper, make sure that newspaper is different than all the other newspapers. It's very, very important. The format, the change, how you present it. Your readers today want something different, something special. Just give it that touch. Give it that first class uh, um, feeling and you'll be very, very successful. So I think my time is just about up. And uh, I don't want to keep you longer, but uh, I'm here to have questions. Okay, yeah, Q just see if anyone yeah. would like to ask you a question. Yeah. It's a Q&A section. Say, just like Skypost, we, you can see in the video during the coffee break, Skypost get a lot of street activities and coordinate with uh, Ocean Park. Yes. So any one of you, if you have interest about that, you can ask the colleagues later. And then anyone would like to have a question to Dr. Seaman? 
say Dr. Simon have raised the example uh, uh, like Uber. Mm. With Uber, really, counter, you have to counter a lot of challenges, right? You have the courage, you have to uh, understand the different parties of the Western in interests. So what do you say when you have to face so much challenge, but you every, have to face the, yeah. Every, the great, I every great idea, you will have to face challenges. Yeah. Um, because every business has vested interest. People have been used to doing things many, many years. Older people hate change, are used to their ways, they're used to doing things in their own way. And so don't be afraid of change. That's something that's very, very important. If you believe in your product, in, if you believe in it, just go for it. Just do it. As I say, Nike has a saying, just do it. Listen to Nike. They're right. <laughs> just do it. And, and don't worry about it. And if you think too much, you won't do it. Don't overthink. Just go ahead. Nothing wrong with failure. Failure is actually good. Failure is very good because at least it makes you think of what did I do wrong and how can I try again. But if you're worried about failing and you don't do it, then you'll never try it. And it'll be a pity, it'll be a shame. At least if you, if you give it an effort, you, you will be successful. Okay, okay. Sir Shaq. <laughs> I think an old man asking another old man <laughs> <laughs> on behalf of the young man. Yes. Now, when you come to, when you go to, went to the ocean park, you mm -hmm. say that you tell your agency, forget about the budget. You know, we are the old man. Mm -hmm. We are the boss. We can kick it around, but not they. If your subordinate marketing people telling you boss, forget about your budget limit, I'll do it. What will you think about? I will think very you, high. No, 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 no. Don't be an, no, no, an open-minded boss, okay? <laughs> Okay, don't be an open-minded <laughs> boss. You have to give me three, situ three situations. Yeah, yeah. An open-minded boss, a very close-minded narrow minded boss, and a very money-conscious boss. Yes. <laughs> uh, all I say is the boss that's close-minded does not have a successful company. And so if, if that boss is, just keeps his staff thinking like him, the company will go nowhere. The competition will eat up that company. So that for sure, that company won't be around very long. And if you work for a company like that, leave. Don't work, <laughs> don't leave for that, don't work for that company. The second thing, if, if, you're, if you're working for a boss that accepts change, that has an open mind, there you have a chance. When I told the designers, forget the budget, I know we have a budget because I knew I only have 5.55 billion to spend for Ocean Park and the budget might come in at 7 million, 7 billion, but I can then value engineer. If I start with something great and then I get it, I fix it a little bit so that it fits into my budget, I have something great that I can work with. If I start with the budget, then it's not going to be the design won't be that good. So always design for more than you think and then you can pare it back to fit the budget that you, because then you, you let people's mind wander and they come up with the best product. Designers, I came from the fashion business, I grew up in the fashion business, I always told the designers, don't worry about the budget, just design me the best clothes that, we can, that you can do the best product and then we would go to the factories and try to fix the price and maybe change the button or change the collar or something like that but still then I, I had something that was very special so for me the bosses that really accept change and think of the future work for companies that think about tomorrow not think about the past and of course we know that you have to protect the bottom line that's very important, the profit, the company has to be profitable, and of course the boss, based on his bonus, uh, needs his bonus, so he wants also to bring in a, a good profit. But still, you want your product to be very, very good, and you want your product to be such that people today will go viral, 
that people will talk about the product. Because in today's world, you have a chance to, uh, to make your product come out and it's scalable. The product can then go around, uh, sell so quickly because of social media, because people, you know, people believe friends. They don't believe ads. They believe word of mouth. And that's the way advertising is today. Word of mouth over the internet. Friends telling friends, buy this product. I just bought it. I'm so happy with it. It's great. Look at what I look like. And, and, and that's really the most important thing. It, we're in a different world today. Yeah, we need a funny boss too, like you. <laughs> yeah. Well, we need a boss that really thinks out of the box and really wants his company to be the best. Yeah. Okay, maybe we take the final question. Any one of you can just raise your hand about, say, uh, Dr. Seaman talk about uh, local color, the target group. Ocean Park mm. and Lang Kwe Fong. Of course, mm. Lang Kwe Fong is more, you, you attract more different uh, nationalities. Different, different Ocean business. Park, yeah. yeah, it was very local. So how do you get the attraction, get the attention about that? Well, local, local today, I, there's not so much difference between local because, you know, travel makes you smart. The more you travel, the more you see things and it changes your culture, it changes your, 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 your being. And so in today's world, because of the online, because of the media, um, you're able to, there's no secrets anymore. In the old days, you had to look at the newspaper or watch television in order to understand about other cultures or other things. Today, everyone is international. Most young people think the same. People in China, I'm in China almost every week because we're building Lan Kwai Fong, expanding Lan Kwai Fong into China. And, and uh, I find the customers there are no different because they travel outside. In the old days, it was very different. It was very Chinese, but today, the more they travel to US and Europe and Hong Kong and Singapore and Thailand, and then they go back to China, they also change. They wear the same clothes, they want the same brands. You know, for Apple phone, that's, U.S. is the lar largest consumer market. Now China is the second largest consumer market for the Apple phone. And so, and so the world is getting much smaller. And that's why it's important when you're thinking, when you're marketing, think of the world as one. Don't separate it. It's not like the old days. Yeah, that's true. Social media makes us... Social uh, media, it's a the world is it's a globalization. Right. has changed the world. So the way you're marketing, be creative. Don't be afraid to experiment. That's the most important thing. Give your product, make it special so that people will want to buy it. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Pleasure. Siemens. Yeah. And thank you all of you for your participation. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs>